Welcome to PowerTech Insights. In this tutorial, I will provide a comprehensive guide on parallel operation of AC generators. Let's get started. Purpose of parallel operation of AC generators. To increase the capacity of available power without loss of supply to the customer's distribution system. To allow the generator to be connected to a live system, for example, a mains, grid, utility, multiple generator systems, combined heat and power. To allow shutdown of individual generators for maintenance or repair purposes. To economize operating costs by running multiple generators according to load demand. To provide an emergency backup to critical supplies without losing power, for example, hospitals, ships, computer data systems. Essential requirements for parallel operation. One all generators must have the same voltage. Two all generators must have the same phase rotation. Three all generators must have the same frequency. Four all generators and prime movers engines must have similar no load to full load voltage and frequency characteristics. Five generator installation must be provided with synchronizing equipment. Six essential protection should include reverse power over current, over temperature, generator over under excitation. Seven, generator of dissimilar design or manufacturer should have similar waveform characteristics, harmonics, if neutrals are joined. Synchronizing of AC generators. Synchronization is carried out in order to parallel a generator onto a live bus bar, either in island mode with multiple generator sets as the only supply or to the utility. Synchronization can be achieved manually, semi-automatic with check sync, or by fully automatic PLC systems. Why is synchronization necessary? Consider a simple installation with two identical generator sets, breakers open circuit. Normally, one generator will already be connected to the load and supplying power. Gen 2 is now closed on the bus bar. It is also normal that the generator on line Gen 2 will be running at nominal frequency 50 or 60 HC, while the incoming generator Gen 1 will be running a higher no load, frequency of about 52 or 62 HZ. Enjoying the video? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to support PowerTech Insights and keep learning with more tutorials. When the relative engine speeds are different, the generator waveforms will be rapidly going in and out of phase with each other. To correctly synchronize AC generators, the frequencies must be almost identical. Frequency is the electrical equivalent of speed, which means that the engine speeds must also be almost identical. Synchronizing equipment is required to monitor the bus frequency and the incoming generator frequency to ensure that the generators are in synchronize. Example 1. Gen 2 is supplying load and is running at 50 HZ, 1500 RPM. Gen 1 is incoming and the engine speed has been adjusted down slightly to almost 1500 RPM, for example 50.1 HZ, as there is a small relative difference between speeds. The synchronizing equipment should be indicating that the generators are in phase and out of phase slowly enough to allow enough time to close the breaker. What will happen if the circuit breaker is closed in the final condition above? The generator waveforms are 180 degrees out of phase with each other. As the breaker closes, Gen 1 will instantly try to reverse the rotation of Gen 2. This is impossible because of the inertia in the engine generator moving parts. The generators will then be instantly be crashed into synchronize. The transient forces created are both electrically and mechanically destructive. Electrical damage can occur to diodes, varistors, and main stator wingdings. Mechanical damage may also occur to couplings, bearings, and shaft. Example 2. Gen 2 is supplying load and is running at 50 HC, 1500 RPM. Gen 1 is incoming and the engine speed has been adjusted down slightly to almost 1500 RPM, 50.1 HZ. The generator waveforms are slowly moving IN and out of phase. The synchronizing equipment indicates that the generator are IN phase. What will happen if the circuit breaker is closed in the above condition? When the synchronizing equipment indicates that the incoming generator Gen 1 is in phase with the bus bar frequency, the circuit breaker can be safely closed. 
The incoming generator should always be slightly faster than the loaded generator. To ensure that the incoming generator takes a small proportion of load when the breaker is closed, the generators are now paralleled. The next step is to check the load sharing. Load sharing of AC generators. Active current is pure power, power factor 1, measured in kilowatts kW. Reactive current is what less current measured in kVr. Reactive current can lead or LAG the voltage. Power factor. Cos phi is a resultant of kW kVa. Active current is in phase with the voltage. Reactive current. Inductive. Lags the voltage by 90 degrees. Reactive current capacitive. Leads the voltage by 90 degrees. Reactive current sharing. The brushless AVR control generator has a natural linear voltage. Drooping characteristic from no load to full load. 0.5% voltage regulation for AVR types MX321, SX421, MA325, MA327. 1% voltage regulation for AVR types MX341, SX440, SA465. 1.5% voltage regulation for AVR type SX460, not suitable for parallel operation. 2. Automatically share reactive load current. Generators must have similar no-load to full-load voltage characteristics. The Parallel Droop Transformer, CT, provides a signal which allows the AVR to sense reactive current, wattless, or zero power factor. Wattless current can be created by incorrect voltage adjustment of the AVRs or dissimilar voltage characteristics in the generators. This is known as circulating current. At full-load 0.8 power factor, the voltage droop required single running generator, is 3%. This is in addition to the normal, natural, voltage regulation of the AVR. A shorting switch may be fitted across the CT for single running mode. The droop setting is adjusted on the AVR droop circuit. Circulating current of AC generators. Consider the above analogy, where two 12-volt batteries are joined together. What will happen if both batteries have an identical charge of 12 volts? There is no potential difference, and no current will flow between the batteries. What will happen if battery A is fully charged and battery B is flat? Current will flow from battery A into battery B, until battery B is equally charged. Potential difference is zero, at which time the current will cease to flow. When generators in parallel have potential differences, circulating current will flow from one generator to the other. Example. Two identical generator sets are to be operated in parallel. Each generator is fitted with a parallel droop transformer connected to the AVR input terminals, S1, S2, which feed into the AVR sensing circuit. Both generators are running with circuit breakers, CB1 and CB2, open. Consider the situation where, before closing the breakers, Gen 1 voltage is set at 400 volts and Gen 2 voltage is set at 410 volts. The generators are synchronized and CB1, CB2 are closed. The resultant bus bar voltage will be 405 volts as the voltages cannot be different when the generators are parallel together. Gen 1 excitation system is still trying to pull the voltage down to 400V. Gen 2 excitation system is still trying to pull the voltage up to 410V. This creates circulating current, which is what less zero power factor, and flows out of Gen 1, IN to Gen 2. Leading power factor current is now flowing IN to Gen 1. Lagging power factor current is now flowing out of Gen 2. The circulating current could be as high or even higher than full load amperes and must be eliminated if the generators are provide load current. AVR1 receives a signal proportional to the circulating current, leading power factor, from the droop CT which increases the D to C excitation voltage. AVR2 receives a signal proportional to the circulating current, lagging power factor, which decreases, droops, the DC excitation voltage. The circulating current is now reduced to acceptable levels, and both generators should now equally share the reactive current component of the load. It should be seen from these examples that the individual no-load voltages on each generator must be set as close A as possible before synchronizing is carried out.
KW Load Sharing of AC Generators The generator AVR and droops are to control the reactive current sharing and also the reactive wattless current component of the load. Component of the load As with the generator control systems, AVR and droop, the diesel engines must have similar no-load to full-load governor characteristics to share the active current power factor 1 or K what component of the system. Engine governing. 1.34 horsepower equals 1 kilowatt. Horsepower is a mechanical equivalent of KW's electrical power. Active load current, KW. Sharing is controlled by the engine governors. A mechanical engine governor requires a minimum of 4% speed droop in order to share the active current, KW, when in parallel. Consider below example. Two generator sets are required to run in parallel. Both sets have 500 H.P. engines. How will engine 1 and 2 share the load automatically throughout all load variations from no load to full load? Consider this analogy where a truck engine represents the genset diesel engine and the truck is the AC generator. For this scenario, the truck engine speed is fixed at a constant speed, 1500 RPM. When the truck is unloaded, the engine is powering the losses only. When the truck is loaded, the engine must provide extra power and the speed of the truck will fall because the accelerator is at a fixed speed. Suppose that two trucks are now joined solidly together. Both trucks are now solidly joined together by a tow bar. As are engines when the generators are in parallel, what will be the effects on the two engines in the following situations? Both engines have identical characteristics from no load to full load. The engine in front is more powerful than the other when fully loaded. One engine develops a fault or runs out of fuel. Provided both engines have the same governor characteristics, they will share the correct proportion of the KW load automatically from NO load to full load. When both engines have similar governor characteristics, they will share the KW load in parallel automatically from no load to full load. When the engines have different governor characteristics, as single running engines, load share will become unbalanced as KW load is increased. Consider below example. Two different sizes of generator sets are required to run in parallel. Set 1 has a 50H.P engine. Set 2 has a 500HP engine. How will engine 1 know that it must take 10% of the total KW load automatically from no load to full load? Once again, provided both engines have the similar governor characteristics, they will automatically share the correct proportion of the KW load from no load to full load. Example, engine 1 develops a fault, which causes it to lose power. What will happen to engine 1 when running in parallel with engine 2? Answer. Engine 2 will be supplying all load current and feeding back active current KW power to Gen 1. Gen 1 has now become a motor, maintaining the speed of Engine 1. This is known as reverse power. Reverse power can occur at no load after the generators are synchronized if one engine governor drifts altering the governor setting relative to the other engine speed setting. On load, if a fault occurs on one of the engines, causing it to lose power, or if the governor setting is incorrectly adjusted to shed all load onto the other generator. The generator must be disconnected from the system to avoid damage to the engine or generator. This is achieved with reverse power protection. How can KW load sharing be achieved without speed droop? For example, Constant speed from no load to full load? Answer. The engines must be fitted with synchronous electronic governors. KW load sharing is achieved by governor control from a KW feedback signal, which automatically controls the KW load sharing. Isochronous governing is equivalent of the two truck drivers having control over the engine governors and the engine loading instrumentation feedback. The load can be monitored by each driver and the overall speed 1500 RPM. By constantly adjusting the governors of each engine, the speed can remain constant from no load to full load, and also the load sharing can be controlled at the same time. The normal mains voltage variations can create very high overload currents in the generator. To eliminate this problem, a power factor control module, PFC3, 
must be connected to the AVR sensing circuit. With the PFC3 activated, the generator can be set to maintain a constant power factor controlled by the input signal from the PFC3. Stay safe. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more expert tutorials. See you in the next video.